Hey everybody, this is Jared 2576 with another video. I wanted to show you how to do a health bar. I've seen some decent ones out there. Um, some seem overly complicated. I just want to show you my version. And it's actually pretty easy. Uh, I also have set up like a progress bar. Something besides a health bar. I'll show you that too. So, quick setup. This fire, or the red block, does damage. All I have is a health modifier on it. Subtract 5 continuously on impact. Detect friend. My puppet is labeled as a friend. So what this means is when I come in contact with it or on impact, I'll start taking minus 5 damage continuously as long as I'm standing on it. This is to regenerate. This is going to be plus 10 health continuously in the zone. So I want the zone. I pick the cylinder. I put the cylinder on the platform. Detect a friend. That's me. These are health pickups. I have a tag called collect. I have a trigger on my puppet that will activate this. When this gets activated, it goes to a health modifier. Which gives me plus 10 health per hit on impact. Detect friend. So when I activate this, I get 10 health. Goes to a timer for one uh, for 0.1 second. And then it destroys itself as a collectible health pickup. I have it set to 0.1 second because sometimes when stuff gets destroyed, if it gets destroyed too quickly... If you have something sending a signal out, it might not get to where it needs to get to. So I just make sure to set it for 0.1 second. It's only really when stuff is getting destroyed. So I have the three coins set up. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like. It says health. And the prog I have a progress bar or a mana bar also. Because I have it set up differently. And I'll show you. But if I stand on the red, it takes away health. Like so, this is regenerating over time. So when I stand on it, it fills up the bar green. These are, and when I step off, it goes back to red because that's the base bar. When I step on a coin, it gives me plus 10. Plus 10. Do it one more time. Plus ten. Regenerate. To laundry. This is the trigger zone for the tag. This is the health modifier or health manager that comes on the puppet. All I'm using is current health and currently gaining health. They both go into a microchip. On this microchip, I have a text box below health. I wrote in health. I shut off auto fit so I can resize the box to this size. Shut off shadow. Center to the top. See instead of the middle to the top so I can put the, the red and green bar underneath it. Center, bottom. This is the sort order, and I'll explain that. This is the green bar, the red bar, and that's the number. So this is for my current health. So since my health is at 100, it outputs a number of 100. Right here, 100. So when I change this, it would change that.
Now, on these, when you saw the bar, it looked like that. Now, if you look closely, the health text box is in the back. I have the red and the numbers in front of it. So on the sorting, the lower the number, the farther to the back it is. So that's zero. Next, I have the green. I set for one. Then I have the red set for two. Because the red is the one you're going to see most of the time. Unless you're healing. And then the number you want on the top, no matter what, so that I put a three. Three would be closer to the screen. Zero would be farthest away from the screen. It only works on screen. It does not work in scene. So that's why, see, like, if I put this up and then I put the green, you don't see the green. If I take the red off, there's the green. Because it's underneath it. Same thing with this. Put that on, but I can put that on too. All right, so that's what the sorting is. So you can sort which one you want to see on top of the other. I have two keyframes. One for the green bar, one for the red bar. It's only three keyframes. at uh, timeline. These are keyframes. This first keyframe... is the green bar. All I did was shut it off here and then saved it. The second, I shrunk down the bar, shrunk it down, saved it. And this one is just the full bar as is. All I did was shut it off and turn it on, and it activates it. And then I saved it. Something else, when I was doing these bars, that's why it's set to the left. Because it's set to the left, I could only move it this way. If I had it set in the middle, see, I can move both sides. I didn't want to do that. I wanted it this way. So when I do the animation of shrinking it, it could only shrink this way. Okay. I did the same thing for the red bar. Once I made the red bar, the green bar and the red bar, I just cloned them. So like I made the green bar, cloned it, Colored it red, named it red. It stays right in the same spot once you clone it. I have a signal manipulator. My health outputs from 0 to 100. But to play a timeline, it's 0 for off, 1 for on. So I needed to convert the signal... From 0 to 100 down to e to just 0 and 1. So in the signal manipulator. Yeah. Plugged it in like that. I went to custom remapper. ease out because I want the signal from 0 to 100 to ease out to 0 and 1. 0 being off, 1 being on. So an easy way to do this is if you have the signal, it's giving out a signal of 100 right now into the signal manipulator. If I go into play mode and I hit learn input range, it brings it to 100. Then I went into here, put it as 
point zero one. Let's do it again. Now it goes from point zero one to one hundred. I brought this down. Let me show play mode. I brought this down to zero. So it'll take my health range from zero to a hundred and output it. The input will be zero to a hundred and outputs it from either zero or one. So because I did ease out, it will do it gradually. So technically this is my health. It's either zero or a hundred or in between. So if I had 50 health, it would shrink it down and output it as 0.5. Because it's 0.5, it would play the keyframe halfway. Because 0.5 would be 50%. If this is 0 and this is 1 being on, 0 being off, 0.5 is half. So it would only play half the timeline. If it was, see, timeline moving, so it's at 40.4 health, it would be a little bit less, a little bit more, let's see, let's see, as it goes down, as it gets closer to zero, then it's off, and then higher to 100, it is on. Because it's on because I want to see the full bar. When it's off, well, zero health, it outputs it at zero. So it's at the beginning of the timeline. Then the bar is empty, it's gone. So you won't see it. That's why I had to use the signal manipulator. So I have the signal manipulator going to the timeline on the timeline you can attach to the playhead so I took the wire from the signal manipulator and just put it right on there Watch, just like this took from here I put it on the timeline the playhead just like that so it will play the playhead depending on the signal that it's getting. So 50 health goes in, 0.5 comes out, it plays it halfway. That's for the green one. The red one, I have the signal manipulator going to an XOR gate. The XOR gate allows one of the two signals to work, not both. So it has to be one or the other. This is from the healing from the health manager when you gain health. So when I gain health, it turns on. Because this turns on, this shuts off. So what this does, I, I lose health, so the red is active. But once I gain health, it shuts off this signal, which shuts off the red bar. Because the red bar is off, you will see the green bar. That's because I'm gaining health. That's why when I was gaining health before, all you saw was the green bar and you saw it going up. Because it's still taking the information from the signal manipulator. Once I'm not being healed by stepping off the green pad, this will shut off. This becomes active. And then my red bar is exactly wherever the signal manipulator is at. So if I had point, well, if I had 40 health and I healed 10, but it would be 40 health would output, this and this would be 40% through the time frame, the timeline. If it's point 0.4 that comes out and it's shown at 40% of the timeline, when I heal, this will go up, say, if I heal myself 10 points, this will go up to 50, or this will go up to 50, that will come out to 0.5, and it will do half of the timeline, so it's a little bit more. But it shuts this off, 
but when it turns back on, since this is still 0.5, it will automatically turn the red timeline at the halfway mark. That's why... Watch, I'll show you one more time. Takes it away. All you see is the red bar. Now remember, when I gain health, is the only time you'll see the green bar. And then if I walk off, it stays at 73, and it turns to red because I'm not being healed no more. It turns green for like a second. I don't know if you can see that. Alright. Now, the other one is the mana. So what I did on him, it's almost identical to this, so I'm going to pull this up, and this is the mana one, all right, so now it's very similar in so many ways, so instead of health, it's mana, the green bar, the red bar, and the number, the green bar, Instead of a red bar, I just changed it to blue and the number of 100. This was the current health, which is set by the health manager, 0 to 100. Here, I have a variable, the initial value of 100, because that would be my current health or my current mana pool. So my mana pool maxes out at 100, just like my health does. I set the minimum value to zero because uh, I don't want to go any less than that for my mana. So I set it to 100. It outputs the current value to the signal uh, to the number displayer. I just labeled that health number. That's why you see the 100 at the bottom of the screen because this is 100. Then it outputs is 100. This is exactly the same time frames. Timelines, the keyframes, the XOR gate, signal manipulator, all that is exactly the same. Just like here, see? So all I really did is replace the variable with the current health coming in. That's all I did. Now, for the healing, remember, so when I was getting healed, all you would see is the green bar. I hooked up to increased. So every time this number gets increased, it acts the same as me being healed. It acts exactly the same as that. So I have these set up. Same as these coins, except instead of the health modifier, it's a variable modifier. With the mana pool, because that's the name of my variable. I have it set to add 5. On power up so when this powers up it adds five to my mana pool the timer goes it gets destroyed this is the same almost the same thing as over there except I had to hook up a trigger zone because the variable modifier doesn't come with it so I hooked up the trigger zone around it labeled friend this is the variable modifier so I have it set to add one continuously while powered. So as long as I'm standing in here, it will be powered. And as long as it's powered on, I keep getting one continuously added to my mana pool. So every time I step on this or pick up one of that, it adds to this variable. And because it adds to this variable... This line becomes active, which shuts off the red, so that way you only see the green. 
this is for a setup. So let me show you real quick. <laughs> <coughs> So on my character, I have it rigged out where if I press triangle, he shoots. Every time I shoot, the cost of my mana is 5, so it deducts 5. See? But then if I come over here and pick this up, it adds 5. Or, continuously. So what I did... This is just from the controller sensor. This is the triangle. I have it wired to a node. I have a timeline. All the timeline in is is his holding out his hand. I'll show you. That's it. See his hand holding out. That's all I did. That was animate that. I have an emitter set to emit the red ball. Shoot it. Oh, on the emitter, object just emitted. So every time this object is emitted, it's hooked up to a variable modifier for mana pool. It adds negative 5. So that means it takes away 5 or power up. So every time an item is emitted, it powers this up and it deducts 5 for the mana cost. I'll show you one more time. So I press triangle to shoot. I have it set to emit once per push per button. You can have it set all different. And then when I pick this up, it gives me 5 or continuously. That's why I said it's, it's exactly hooked up as the help. The reason I did this is because you can make it as a progress bar. Because you can change the variables to whatever you want it to be. So, say you're doing a, a scene and you got five things that you have to complete before you can move on. And you want to have a progress bar. You could do that. So you, instead of 100, just have it set to 5. And when you collect all 5 quests that you finished, it would output a signal and the bar would be full. It would be exactly the same way. You, all, you would only need one of these, though. You wouldn't need the other ones unless you wanted to, to show the green for um, adding. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to show you how to do it this way. Instead of depending on a number coming in already. Because this will already output your health. This I had to make up a number. So I figured I'll show you both ways. Well, that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, hope everybody enjoyed it. I uh, hope you learned a little bit about signal manipulators a little bit. Uh, There's still new, to, new territory for me. But uh, I've been learning a lot. And just keep messing around with stuff man that's that's exactly what i do i just tinker around with stuff sometimes it gets frustrating but sometimes you learn some good stuff all right thanks for watching